And as I hear it, we will also spare the following discussions and the uh, question sessions. We will do that tomorrow, as I understood. Is it correct? Can we have some questions? Sure, we can have. You're the boss, so. <laughs> Three questions, maybe? You only, you have given us a very new technology, but can you tell me in Indian contest how much it should cost? We are not generating any power out of it. This is only an incineration. There is no end, uh, you are not, uh, are you using it for uh, generating power? Yes, we are generating power in okay. some plant. One. I mean, because your picture didn't show that you're connecting it to any grid. So that energy which you are developing is for generating power. In Indian contest, how much it should cost us for 1,000 tons, a plan for 1,000 tons, how much it should be an Indian, I mean, this thing. Will that be able to give me a some figure? Uh, today, I can tell you only the Japan price. Okay, how but, much it should uh, be for... 1,000 tons per day of incineration. <laughs> uh, let me say uh, 10 million Indian rupee per ton. So multiplied by 1,000. 10 million yen. 10 million Indian rupee. Or oh, Indian rupee per, per ton. ton. Okay, thank you. But a little, little bit more expensive. It depends on the waste characteristic. Thank you. Maybe it's about the different technologies like closure. We in Mumbai had that Gorai closure, as you must, you are aware of that. Secondly, we are going in for the bioreactor or bio mining at our consul landfill. And uh, thereafter, the question, some issues were raised by Mr. L uh, Lima, I believe, regarding the quality of compost. So, would you please throw some light on that? Because in this case, unsegregated waste, which includes everything, will be there in bioreactor or biomining cell. And after opening it, what will be the... I think your Can you see... Huh? Your question is... Uh, uh, Regarding the quality of compost, after we reopen... Uh, yeah, in so bioreactor. Yeah, definitely it depends on what you put into the, the reactor. Right? So if you uh, put all the, the waste material that you have and then you will, you will, you will be, uh, once you mine, there will be say, for example, if you put metals into the, into the bioreactor, so that will stay as metals at the end, right? So, but what you have to do, you have to process that and remove that, you know, that is something that you need to consider. So you can minimize the amount that goes into the compost fraction. So there is uh, the, uh, the, uh, exit end processing that you need to do. So that is how you would, you know, control the, uh, the metals and other stuff that goes into the system. But you do that even with the normal composting operation as well, right? But here you might say that it might be, uh, you know, you put uncontrolled material into the, the, to the bioreactor and then, but at the end you process that. But if you put uncontrolled material into a composting plant, you still have to process that as well. So you, you can figure out what, uh, what comes out of that. And did I answer that question or? Yeah. I'd like to add here that uh, uh, biomining that you mentioned, uh, so you are trying to exploit uh, from the dump site which has been there for maybe 10, 20 years and trying to recover something which uh, is, there is some humus, there is some organic material in it, but it was sitting in the company of, you know, batteries and thermometers and whatnot. Now, if you are trying to screen it, obviously there is no guarantee that it will not be, it will not be, I mean, it will be free from heavy metals and, you know, uh, this uh, uh, medicine, uh, uh, antibiotics and pathogens and so on and so forth. Now, there is a big danger. If you're trying to position that as a fertilizer for agriculture, that is not useful for food crop application at all. You can use it for non-food crop. But even there, there is a danger of contaminating the soil in that area or the contamination of the land. However, 
what it can be used for as a covering material on your landfill site itself. For the new landfill what you are doing, instead of bringing virgin soil, you use this, so you save on that. So that's one possibility. Thank you. Thank you. Then maybe one last question here in front. Yeah, uh, see this is to Tanaka. Two. Tanaka. Uh, the temperature in a vertical combustion is 900. So what happens to the metals which has a high melting point, number one? Then uh, you say there is no segregation required, in a, it's a medical waste incineration. So what happens to the uh, anything which contains radioisotopes, particularly when you use nuclear medicines? I, thought, uh, I said no segreg segregation is needed, but... So what happens to needles? Needles. Needles will become like... Uh, you know, no, they won't break, right. break 900 metal. all metals will not, the steel will not. You know, the metal like a uh, needle for the syringe, it will become like a black metal, when you touch the black metal, Negligible. it will <laughs> crops. <laughs> the second question is that, since it's a medical waste, nowadays they use a lot of nuclear medicines. Nuclear medicine. Ah. So there will be radioisotopes in some of the waste. As you said, there is no segregation required. Then what happens to those radioisotopes in nuclear medicines? Uh, <laughs> I don't know much about the radiographic waste. Can I respond to that? Yeah, clear waste coming out of the radiotherapy department. I think uh, Japan is one society which is known for segregating garbage at household level into 16 different types. So it's not like what happened in India a couple no, of this years. This is coming one uh, more. medical waste. One more, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hospitals, yeah. I'm coming to that. So, you know, I'm sorry, I think I lost my thoughts. Uh, they are doing 10, 15 different segregations household level. So that is the level of discipline Japanese society is known for. So it, didn't, it, it won't do what happened in Delhi, that uh, nuclear waste came into a Kabadiwala Dukan. Nuclear waste from a radiotherapy clinic would be separately collected, disposed of. It won't come into general solid municipal waste category or uh, even biomedical waste category. That's my understanding. No, this medical waste would come certainly from the hospitals. In that's a city, what I'm saying, in a that city, even in hospital, not from the household. No, yeah, I'm, that's what I'm saying, even in hospital, they will have very meticulous segregation system. And so, also checks and balances. Not like, I have said that what happened in Delhi a couple of years back, when the radio... So the answer is probably simple, then you don't incinerate or don't combust the yeah, yeah. nuclear waste. Certainly not. It is to be so separated out. Certainly not, segregation. certainly. Uh, yes, sir, things are not like this regarding the Please nuclear compounds only. or nuclear isotopes as we are discussing. There is a single agency in the country that is called as BRIT. That is a, you can say, agency of the BRC that is giving these isotopes to the hospital, known quantity of the radioactivity. Uh, let me complete, Professor. And hospital has to maintain the complete record and there is always a separate division in the hospital and whatever radio medicine is going to the waste that go back to them and then that go to the dump site Re nuclide, this radionuclide waste is never mixed with the general hospital waste this is very very clear no, I'm talking about the Okay. Though this is very interesting, I think it's very specific. Let's maybe continue bilaterally tomorrow, but it's a good issue, definitely. I would like, this is now the really final question. Please keep yourself Thank you. short. Uh, I want to address uh, the three, the unsuccess of these. And I want maybe a few sentences from each one of you uh, while you are here, there here is a knowledgeable Indian person that has researched and came to the conclusion that it's not uh, technically feasible in India. And let's uh, go from the point... 
Excuse me. Uh, let's, let's assume for a moment that landfilling is not the answer. And let's assume for a moment that recyclables will be recycled. So if we have these two points, how can you, the three people that came from abroad to uh, implement a new technology to India, how can you convince this knowledgeable gentleman that your technology is feasible for India and it's uh, with all the problems that there are, it's the best solution. Thank you. I think uh, it is addressed to the three experts, but uh, let me first uh, give a caveat. Uh, my presentation, I didn't take you to the final slide. After all this analysis, my conclusions would be that, you know, while you're doing any waste value addition, that's a big challenge. However, there are only two solutions as per the, again, the law of physics. Anything that has used its useful life, and lived its useful life, end of the purpose and end of value, deserves only two solutions. One is either dignified burial or dignified cremation. The dignified cremation is mass burn and dignified burial is landfill. There are no other solutions. If we keep on trying, we will all keep on doing the same mistake what I showed. So I'm not saying that don't go for this or that. If you have land problem, for example, Delhi, Mumbai, etc., you have to go for mass burn. On top of it, you cannot wish away landfill. You will have certain residuals. You will have to do that. But at the same time, I am not saying that stop practicing the 3R, 4R, 5R. You have to continue, those good practices have to continue. It's only that, okay, okay I am setting up my foundation of a robust uh, cremation system and a robust burial system, but at the same time a separate team is working on all the recycling and whatever, whatever, whatever. At least I have ensured that there is no litter. At least there is no open dumping happening. Now, once okay. my house is set in order, yes. I can do rest of the things. Thank you. Okay, so you are asking, uh, including me, a response? Uh, you weren't uh, not, representing not, a company, so... I'm not selling any technology, but I can give you my take. I have been working in this area for about 30 years, and I've okay. seen how things change over time. I mentioned that there is no silver bullet. And I also agree with uh, Sid Nima that you know, landfill is necessary evil. You have to have a landfill, whatever you do, it might be very small, you still need that. So you need to understand that as well. But the, the question is, you know, the, the technology. Will it work? Yes, technology works, but under certain situations. So you need to understand the socio-political situation. Social aspect is very critical uh, when you want to understand how the social and economic aspects are very critical when your uh, technology is applied. You know, I think a good example is going to the U.S. I know uh, in the U.S. 1980s, composting. Everything was composting. Then came the smell problem. They shut them down. And then 1990s became incineration. That was the solution. And then came air, air pollution issues related to that. So 1990s, that's gone. Now, again, composting is getting back to uh, the so-called, you know, fashion in the U.S. I'm giving an example how this changed, you know. Please, a short years, one. I come back right now. Uh, yeah, let me finish that, please. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he gave me, <laughs> asked me a question. Asked, let me finish. The, the, the issue is, I think the, you know, you come back today, incineration might be uh, considered as polar sol uh, solution. Come back in 10 years' time, you'll be running away from incineration. So don't ever assume there is one solution. Keep your mind open, and then you have the, you know, you want to look at the yards, very important. There are a lot of things that you can, composting can be important, can be implemented somewhere. Incineration can be implied, definitely, in certain situations, not everywhere. There's no single solution. My, my question was uh, referring to waste to energy because of India's current land availability problem. Uh, for example, I know that in Delhi, the waste problems needs to be so, uh, solutioned within the uh, area of Delhi. They could not 
exceed outside. So, please. Sir, I can say like that. This technology is not a failure technology. Technology is 100% successful technology. This combustion, reversible re reciprocating system, this is a success, very successful technology. And now you can find in Delhi also, Jindal is running successful. But there is a problem in the encouragement from the government. It, it has to support because it is it is a must to dispose of the waste as a scientific method. It is a must for the cities or municipal corporations. It is must for that and they have to support and they have to give a higher tariff and it be because of this MSW characteristics and all, it is costing more. But for treatment and all technology getting from the Chinese or some Japan or something European, it is getting more costing for megawatt, 12, mega, 12 crores per megawatt it is costing. According to that, the tariff has to be fixed for this uh, u units. Then only it is viable. So we have to talk about that levels and we have to create some policy making for the viable of these projects. This has to be done in India. Sure. Okay, I think uh, I think we're running out of time. I'm sorry. One minute only. One minute. Yeah, I can say like this, sir. You are you know very well that uh, solar uh, development and uh, government is giving that per megawatt it is around uh, nine crores to ten crores per megawatt solar expenditure, and they are paying nine rupees per unit per kilowatt hour. And why not for the municipal solid waste based waste to energy power plants? This is what the question from, from my, as a developer for the government. Why they are not considering this by being a social obli obligation projects? It is the, co co the corporation, municipal corporation's responsibility. We are taking care and we are doing on, uh, some uh, investment. We are doing enterprise. This developer is giving a developer this uh, uh, investment of 300 crores uh, investment as doing. Why not for this? Okay, then only one minute from my side, you also asked me, so um, first of all, saying landfill is not the solution that you cannot apply 100% to India. If you do that, you skip 30 years of development, so landfill is definitely at the moment playing an important role, and scientific landfill, as compared to the situation as they are facing it today, with open dumps, open burning, that is a huge increase and a huge progress in waste, waste management. And we as our company, we are definitely propagating incineration for India also because there is specific places who are facing considerable problems today. And these pro problems are mostly related to space requirements and to huge amounts of waste which they don't know where to put. So these big cities, there definitely incineration is the most optimal solution but it is not the one solution for India. It is playing an important role, and as India develops, incineration will be one technology beyond others. Okay, I think that closes today. I thank you again once more, especially our chairman and the other speakers here. So, I wish you a nice evening. See you tomorrow, nine o'clock. There is an important announcement. Tomorrow the program will start at 9 a.m. and we have live webinar by Professor Nicholas Thimelis from Earth Engineering Center of Columbia University. So kindly come by 9 at this venue. Thank you very much.